Ah, GarageBand, the application with no user manual. If you have a Mac or iOS device and you want to make your own music, GarageBand is a great place to start. So I'm going to be teaching you the basics. If you stick to this series till the end, you'll be able to bang out your own groovy tunes. Opening up GarageBand, either from your desktop or your applications, you'll be presented with this little startup screen. Keep in mind that if you were working on a project before, it will automatically open up that project instead of this little startup screen. Clicking new project is pretty self-explanatory. You only got the one option, empty project. Clicking this will open up a clean slate where you can begin working on a song. Keep in mind this little details arrow that will give you some extra options. Here, you can mess with the tempo, time signature, and all that music mumbo jumbo. More importantly, you can change the input and output device. For now, we'll default to system settings so the sound will come out of the computer. Learn to Play and Lesson Store will show you how-to videos on guitar and piano. This is helpful if you want to learn how to insert your own instrumental audio. Recent will show you your recently opened projects so you can return to a song you were working on earlier. Project Templates will give you pre-made songs in a variety of genres that you can edit if you need inspiration or just don't want to start from scratch. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to click New Project. We're presented with a couple of options here. Now let's get a basic understanding of what these three options entail and stick around for part two where we'll dive even deeper into what these three options are for. Software tracks use MIDI, an instrumental digital interface to create a melody using notes placed by hand or keyboard. Now I know that sounds complicated, but it's really not. It's as simple as selecting a desired instrument such as an electronic drum kit, a synthesizer, or a wide variety of other instruments and using your keyboard to create a personal melody. This is best used for creating original pieces that would help differentiate yourself from the sea of other GarageBand users. Up next, we have audio, which is split up into two different options. The main function of microphone audio is simple. It gives you the ability to use a microphone or a similar line input, whether it's right from your Mac, a standard mic, or a variety of other mics. This is most commonly used to add lyrics to a song, but is also a great alternative to a legit audio editing program. We'll touch on that later. Well, that about wraps up part one. In part two, we'll take a deeper dive into these three options and learn the role they play in your GarageBand experience.